In this video, we're going to introduce the principle of homeostasis. To supplement this video, you can refer to the AQA A2 Biology textbook by Glenn and Susan Toole. And the pages you're going to want are 194 to 195. After watching this video, you should be able to achieve the following objectives. You're going to be able to define the principle of homeostasis. You're going to appreciate why homeostasis is important for an organism's survival. You're going to understand how feedback mechanisms lead to changes in conditions. And we're going to look at an analogy to explain how homeostasis works. So what is homeostasis? You might have come across this idea at GCSE level. It's the idea that for organisms, or even cells, to be able to survive, they need to keep their internal conditions as constant as possible. And this is pretty much a constant process, as metabolic processes and the external environment can have a negative impact on conditions within the organism. Homeostasis maintains internal conditions within an acceptable range so that the organism is not adversely affected. So here's the textbook definition. The tendency of an organism or a cell to regulate its internal conditions, usually by a system of feedback controls, in order to ensure proper functioning. So we're going to explore this idea a little bit further. I'm going to look at why we bother with this process. So the first fact we need to consider is enzymes. And these guys are fussy. If we take humans as an example, pretty much all of our enzymes operate their optimal rate around human body temperature. It's around 36.8 degrees. It's vitally important that our body temperature doesn't stray too much from this value. Too low, and metabolic processes slow right down. Too high, and the enzymes denature. pH is also a factor for enzymes. Enzymes in different parts of the body work best at different pHs. As you can see from the graph, too high or too low is going to affect the rate of reaction in a negative way. Too much of a deviation from the optimum pH will lead to the enzyme denaturing. Another factor that's important to control is water content, and also solute content, which both can contribute to the water potential of cells. As you can see from the diagram, cells can be damaged in two ways by incorrect water balance. They can take in too much water and undergo osmotic lysis, or they can shrivel and shrink if they lose too much. Blood glucose levels are another important factor that must be closely regulated. Now this is a difficult balancing act, because glucose is an important commodity within the body. It acts as a respiratory substrate, so it's really important that there is enough glucose in the circulation of the blood to satisfy the demands of the respiring cells. However, if there is too much glucose in the blood, some organs can become damaged, so our bodies must have a mechanism to be able to keep the balance right, and we'll explore this in a, in a bit more detail in a later video. Now, our body controls conditions by using these things called feedback loops. And there are two kinds. We've got negative feedback loops, and we have positive feedback loops. Negative feedback causes a change away from the set point to return back to the set point. So what it's doing is it's opposing change. And this usually involves a mechanism in the body being switched off. Now, positive feedback works slightly differently, and this exaggerates a change in conditions. Now, it's kind of hard to imagine why this would be a useful mechanism. But when we look at the hormones involved in the menstrual cycle in a later video, things will clear up. So here's a diagram to explain what these two feedback mechanisms do. Okay, we're going to explore a flowchart of how homeostasis works, and we're going to use an analogy of a central heating system to explain this. You can find this diagram in your textbook on page 195. So our first step, we need a change to the system, and this is the input. Okay, um, So this, in our central heating analogy, this is where the temperature of our room drops. So we want the temperature to be at 20, but it's dropped to 18. The second step is the receptor, which measures the level. In this case, the thermostat is going to detect that the temperature has dropped, and it's going to pass this information on to the third step, which is the control unit. And this is where it's decided what action needs to be taken. In this case, the control unit of the central heating system checks to see if the system is timed to be on. 
And if it is, it tells the boiler to warm things up and start pumping hot water to the radiators. The fourth step is the effector, the bit that actually makes the changes. In this case, we've got the boiler heating water and the pump circulating the hot water. We've then got the output, which is the temperature being raised to 20 degrees. Now at this point we've got a bit of an issue. There's nothing at all to tell our system when to switch itself off. So what we'd end up is we'd end up with a constantly increasing temperature, which is pretty daft. So what we need is a feedback loop, and this is going to tell the mechanism when to switch off. So here we go. And this is an example of negative feedback, so it's going to return uh, the, the temperature to the set point involving turning something off. It's going to oppose a change away from the set point. And we're back to the start. Okay, because of this feedback system, the temperature of the room will always vary slightly around the set point because it takes time for the system to turn on and off, but it's always going to be more or less near that set point. Okay, so let's summarize this. Homeostasis is the maintenance of internal conditions. Temperature, pH, water content, glucose levels all need to be kept within strict limits to avoid damage to the organism. These factors are controlled by a simple system that involves feedback loops. Negative feedback opposes changes to internal conditions. Positive feedback increases changes to internal conditions. So here's some extra reading. This is from ESCO. What you want to do is scan this QR code with your smartphone. You'll need an app for that. Um, but if not, there's a link just at the bottom here. Um, and this is a really nice introduction to homeostasis in a different way to how I've explained it today. And here's a video. And this is, um, again, a different example uh, using heart rate um, and how that's controlled. So take a look at that. It's really good. Thanks for watching.